July 23, 2023. Ukraine war, approximately nine years and six months into the invasion of Crimea. Day 515 of Special Putin's operations. Big picture. Russian infantry attacks have increased nearly twofold from three weeks ago. The Kremlin appears shell starved in Kherson and Zaporizhia. Many to most of Ukraine's problems stop being such a big problem when they get accurate short range ballistic missile capability. Nipa line. Ukraine continues to hold the left bank daches at the Antonivka Bridge. Kremlin shelling in this area has fallen tremendously, likely due to shell starvation thanks to the skill of Ukrainian drone strikes. Zaporizhia front. Ukraine is making regular minor gains, however Kremlin mouthpieces continue to claim that all gains are for large numbers of vehicles. Until Ukraine can solve the 10 km standoff of helicopters, they are going to struggle getting APCs forward to ferry infantry safely to combat range. Ukraine is reporting success in clearing the first lines of mines. East Front, Donetsk. Perhaps the heaviest fighting of the last 24 hours in this area. The Kremlin ordered an attack in four different towns west of Donetsk, with Mariinka and Avdiivka being on that list again. Both sides are having success with drones regularly, lots of artillery duels, but no line changes reported. Bakhmut area. Heavy fighting immediately west of the city, no line changes claimed by either side. A handful of artillery duels. Oskol border front. Over half a dozen artillery duels in the last 24 hours. Heavy fighting around the Sivisk bulge. Heavy fighting at the Kamazanivka crossing. Northern border. Shelling continues. Lukashenko seems to be hopeful that the people of Belarus will back him in a war against NATO. Black Sea. Ukrainian air defense at Odessa is currently unable to defeat the volume of attack the Kremlin has been using in that direction for the last four days. The move by the Kremlin's navy to attacking from Sevastopol makes it more difficult to predict the number of launches. The Kremlin has now attacked both the Greek and the Chinese consulates in Odessa in the last three days. Tech reveal. In the last week, at least three new Russian weapon systems have been unveiled in Kremlin mouthpiece outlets. First the supposed S-70 stealth drone as it flew in tests somewhere in eastern Russia. Next, we show an image from a film supposedly taken in Ukraine, exposing a Kokliatsky armored vehicle drone, claimed to be remotely controlled by the PARS combat module. Claimed to be holding an armament of 30mm ATM, one cannon, 30mm auto grenade launcher, 7.62mm machine gun, and twinned anti-tank barrier missiles capable of a claimed 5.5km range. Finally, the VDV has shown the other side of high-tech operating along the Dnieper. Ukraine world related. Some smarties in the US seem to think that Ukraine sending the F-16 into combat will require a repair crew for each plane, when the reality is that 4th gen has to be expected to suffer regular combat attrition, meaning repair needs won't match a fleet in beam. Other smarties in the US seem to think that a naval and air conflict in Western Pacific will be dominated by a need for ground-launched missiles. The reason there are large defensive lines are that Russia had time to build them. Perhaps NATO should delay longer, I'm sure that the Kremlin's threats to destroy Eastern Europe after Ukraine are idle. Ireland has announced a $3 billion plan to develop commercial air travel in Ukraine when the war is over. Ukraine can chew gum and walk, shut up and give them the tools. The UK is sending at least 36 Wolfram missile platforms to Ukraine for use with the Brimstone missile. We aim to bring more. Like and subscribe.